Welcome to the Moving Picture Studio, Joshua Safran, Yoav Potash. Um, firstly, congratulations on having crime after crime here at Sundance. What was that news like when you received the phone call that you were going to have the film here? Well, it was a long time coming, uh, and I was very excited to get that phone call. This was a documentary that when I began making it, I thought was going to take about a year, and it took five and a half. So after submitting to Sundance and really you know, putting everything I had into that, uh, getting that phone call was just, honestly, it was a huge relief because uh, I really invested in and envisioned this as the premiere and I didn't want to think about what the runner-up was and I didn't think about it very much at all and luckily, I don't have to. Right, and Joshua, your race was a little longer than that. When did your, when did your interaction with Deborah Piegler first start? At the, at the end of 2002 is when I began advocating for her and the movie um, picks up in kind of early 2005. And so yeah, for me this is, you know, uh, you know, 2011 now. So it's been a long marathon and I, I, I finally, I do feel like we've crossed the finish line now that we're here at Sundance. And how did you even become involved in the first place? Well, in 2002, uh, California passed a new law, uh, the only state in the nation that allowed uh, incarcerated survivors of domestic violence to challenge their convictions. These are women who themselves have been horribly abused and then their batter had been killed. So uh, a nonprofit group went around, interviewed all these women who were serving life and discovered a bunch of them that needed a lawyer and they came to our firm and talked to my co-counsel, Nadia Costa, who talked to me and said, hey, you want to do a pro bono case, a free case on behalf of one of these women? And I said, sure. And we thought it would take about six months and a budget of about $5,000 and we get to free a woman, so that's awesome. Um, it ended up taking us significantly longer, more like seven years. In terms of an investment of your time and energy and the same question for you, you have, is it like difficult while you're going through that process to continue to be so personally involved? It was very difficult for us to be so personally involved and there were times when, you know, um, my entire uh, kind of career and personal life hinged on outcomes in the case and, you know, um, I was working nights and evenings and um, weekends and it was, uh, it was a long uh, struggle and it was sort of Deborah's faith that she would get out and my own faith uh, as an Orthodox Jew that uh, I was working on behalf of a higher power that kept me going. Yeah. You are? Well, I think in a similar way to the legal battle itself that, that Crime After Crime documents, making the, the film Crime After Crime took this kind of immense uh, uh, just capacity to withstand any setback, to withstand the unpredictable path that this case would follow, uh, to just continue believing, continue hoping that we would see the day that Deborah Piegler was released, that, that that was always the ending for the film that I was envisioning, that I was hoping would transpire, but at the same time, I knew that this documentary could, could end up not having that ending and just having the stamina to stick with it no matter what uh, certainly was a requirement, but at the same time, really from the moment I met Deborah Piegler, I had that commitment, I had that place in my heart that I knew I was not going to give up no matter what happened, whether, whether the funding for the film came through or not, uh, whether the case turned out the way I wanted, wanted it to or not, I knew that this story had a heart that was unstoppable.